Ready? Okay, go. Hi everyone, I'm Zorana. I'm Hadia. I'm Josh. Scott. Valeria. And we're going to be introducing Lyft. Um, so, Lyft was formerly known as Zimride in its early days. Today it's an app similar to Uber. In its original concept, it essentially aims to organize college students to carpool together, say heading home from Cornell to New York for the weekend. Um, in its early days, and even today, it prioritizes the safety of both the driver, who's essentially selling a seat in his or her car, and the passenger through today's technology with online reviews and ratings. Um, so essentially, it had to break through the taboo that was getting into a stranger's car about 15 years ago. So going off of what Zarina said, there are multiple unmet needs that the founders wanted to tackle. The first one was navigating population density increasing as resources were becoming more limited. As a result, traffic was becoming increasingly worse, especially in cities, and there was a need to decrease the amount of vehicles on the road. Likewise, although public transportation is affordable and accessible for consumers, it is expensive for the government to maintain. This is because consumers' pay only covers 30% of the operating fee, so a $3 ticket for a consumer actually costs the government $10. And the more busy that public transportation is, the harder it is to fund and add service level to, or evaluate the performance of it. And while these reasons also may have inspired Uber, Lyft's mission was to always uh, cater their services to a bigger target market, including everyday people, unlike Uber, which actually began as a exclusive car riding company for the elite. Now, like most startups, Lyft wasn't exactly a smooth sail. So they had a number of hardships at, um, when they first started off. So the first and foremost is finding enough people to actually use their app. And at this point, um, using an app to find like a taxi wasn't exactly a novelty, but it was still a relatively new idea. And this also relates to the trust between the driver as well as the customer, because um, as my colleagues here pointed out, it's not exactly like well known or like it's not well accepted for people to just get into a stranger's car. And a third hardship that Lyft faced was actually marketing towards these college students and therefore they needed to find out what the college student wanted in this kind of app. So uh, in the <coughs> podcast, the founder, uh, John uh, Zimmer, attributed their success to two uh, main factors. Uh, the first one, of the three factors, the first one is uh, less comp competition at the beginning. So uh, during that time, there, are, there, is an, uh, there are not many uh, peer-to-peer companies. And the second one is focused on the customer need. So in the, uh, on the early stage, uh, their, their goal is ma making sure people could get a ride uh, when they want it at the best possible price. And when once they have the parity on that, uh, they start to build uh, enough in infrastructure and basic uh, driver community to make sure uh, people can uh, get a ride in the city within like, three minutes. And the third one is create a better experience uh, by treating the driver better with uh, cash tip uh, and paying in the, in the same day. They tried to create an environment that uh, driver was respect and translate that to a uh, passenger being uh, treated better in other service. And then some surprises that um, we found is podcast where that the founders grew up on opposite ends of the country. So Zimmer grew up in Connecticut on the East Coast and Logan grew up in Santa Monica on the West Coast. So just the fact that they had to constantly meet in the middle and get together to develop their project. And then another is the government because the government obviously could not pre, pre they couldn't have thought that modern technology would enable this feature, so they had to create a new category for everyone to be safe and a new regulation. So the government had to be revised and updated. And then another thing that surprised us was the fact that in order to, when they first began Lyft, they had to get, uh, they targeted college campuses and they dressed up in a beaver and frog costume and handed out flyers in order to get the people's attention. And then also the role that smartphones played in the company because our life is so connected to technology and everything that we do through the internet and our phones that I would just, I had never thought about how much we use them until you have to use them every day to like get Uber and use everything. Thank you.
Any questions for the group? How do you compare them to Uber? So, um, Hadia kind of touched upon this, but it's like a much longer story that we couldn't further include. So in its early days, they had completely different target markets, even though today they have very similar target markets. Lyft was primarily targeting college students and implementing it in college universities to partner students together, while Uber was kind of like a fancy limousine service, but like via the phone. Um, so business people versus relatively budget-friendly college students. Um, and then slowly their target markets merged, but what's commonly unknown is that Lyft came first in comparison to Uber. And in the podcast, Zimmerald will talk about how, like, even he always gets in interviews, he always gets asked about um, what's the difference between Uber and Lyft. And he says that they are, although now they are very similar, like, as Zorana said, they started out differently, but he still sees them as competition, and that drives him to cater his customers more so that he could get the better um, customers. Okay. Who, um, what do people prefer here? Uh, I'm just curious. Uh, who prefers Uber? And who prefers Lyft? Okay, not that many. Okay. Good. Well, thank you very much. That was good.